Welcome back. Now, on the 4th and 5th of August, there is a second Exit Politics conference in Liverpool where I and a number of other speakers will be speaking. In part three, I will be re-screening a review of the speakers for the upcoming conference. I'm talking with Anthony Beckett about the UK annual Exit Politics conferences because there's two this year, one on the 30th of June, which we've been talking about, and another on the 4th and 5th of August at the Static Gallery in Liverpool. Now, Exopolitics is the study of anything related to intelligences not of this earth or policy towards extraterrestrials, UFOs, etc. Now, uh, in the August conference, uh, tell us who you've got speaking there, Anthony. Uh, we're, we're starting with Andrew Johnson on the beginning of the, on the, on the Saturday, and he'll be talking. I th I've got Dan Dark Mission as his provisional title, I think, but uh, he's right. going to be looking at. Um, what can be considered not the dark nature of the UFO as such, but the dark nature of UFO research right. in the idea of certain researchers not quite working towards the... Mm -hmm. so Andrew alleges that certain people within the 9-11 truth movement are operatives and are merely there to uh, make, change people's perceptions of who are trying to get to the truth. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I would go along with him on many of those people that he's named. Mm. So he's going to do this a similar thing looking at the UFO? Yeah, uh, there's, well, I mean, it's quite a broad scope of subjects, mm. but it's basically going to be looking at the, I mean... The cover-up. The cover-up, yeah, mm. and how the cover-up is... Well, one of the things he says about the 9-11 truth information is how the cover-up is multi-tiered. Mm. There's a, there's a cover-up at one level, but once you get past that and realise something else went on, there's like other things, <laughs> it wasn't quite as the official story. Yeah. Then you start looking at other evidence and you, you find that there's another tier of truth mm. There's an which official conspiracy theory which Again, is also bogus. And you have the similar, you, ha you possibly have similar so, kind of a structure within the UFO cover yeah. up. The UFO cover up. Yeah. Um, to give an example without naming names, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, there's a certain, there's this, for example, there's, I mean, we, we, I'm not going to mention Name Nick, the names. I'm not going to mention Nick Pope again, but um, some people. Well, well we some don't people, need to mention him. People, some people say Nick Pope <laughs> is working for others. He yeah. doesn't need to be. He's a, he works for the media. It's his job now. Right. So regardless of who he's working for, at one yeah. level, he's always going to be working for them because it's his job, right? So yeah. <laughs> we have people who are already working, still working, for example, with, for the US military, uh -huh. coming out saying, no, there's no UFO cover-up. Yep, there's UFOs, and we need to kind of, you know. They're basically discrediting people who are UFO researchers who say there's a government cover-up right. because they disagree and say they find no evidence. All right. And anyway, yeah, so and anyway, I'm just going to be covering that kind of stuff. If basically, the bottom line is, there's, there's ways you can actually suss out these people, and, mm -hmm. and there's, a, there's like a litmus test, really. Mm -hmm. And it's basically truth telling. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whether it's telling the truth as they see it or, the, or whether they're covering up. If they start covering up other stuff, then yeah, okay, you can't necessarily trust them. If they speak, speak the truth as they see it and they're wrong, that's, if that's a different matter. Yeah. But uh, there's evidence that some people are working towards the common good, when you put it that way. Right. So yeah, that's Andrew's bit talk uh, at the beginning of the Saturday. All right. And then what we have is three lectures, well, uh, one, uh, one film and then two lectures, all covering the animal mutilations phenomena. Right. So what we're going to have is we're going to be showing your film, Silent Killers. Mm -hmm. It was as an introduction to the subject, because uh, I know m many people will have heard about mm -hmm. the phenomena, but won't know necessarily the details. Yeah, I mean, I can, that, uh, yeah. the animal mutilation phenomenon for decades has been linked to the UFO phenomenon. And... Uh, I've spoken about this in my tour, and in 2009 I made a film with the help of David Caton, Phil Hoyle and Mike Freebury, who had a group called the APFU Animal Pathology Field Unit, and they researched cases of animals that basically are discovered with surgical injuries that no one can explain, no one's ever been caught, no one's ever been seen with this phenomenon, and uh, there are people who have claimed to have seen documents in the Pentagon saying that this is an extraterrestrial phenomenon, that these animals, whoever's doing it, it's not a, it's, it's a non-human activity. Now, I made a film about this in 2009, uh, and that's going to be screened at this conference to, to set the stage for, the, for Mike Freebury and myself and David Caton. And yeah. um, I've interviewed Mike Freebury on this show before. He's investigated cases on Dartmoor and other cases of sheep mutilations and uh, pony mutilations and his book is uh, Killers on the Moor. Uh, people can watch the interview that I did with Mike Freebury uh, online. And then after that, myself and David Caden are going to do a joint talk about the animal mutilation phenomenon. And David's currently researching the seal mutilations, which have occurred over between 2008 and 2010 
in Norfolk, uh, St Andrews in Scotland, and of the northeast coast of Northern Ireland. And uh, people who think that the media has given a rational explanation for this, I can inform you that the person who's carried out most of the post-mortems on the seals does not know what is causing it. <laughs> so don't believe what you see in the mainstream. All right then, Anthony. Um, so after we've had the animal mutilation talks with Mike Freeby, myself and David, who have we got after that? Yeah, we've got a guy, a Canadian guy actually, who we've been wanting to get over for a few years now. Um, I first met him, I think, in 2005 at the Executive Bassett's X conference and he's a, he's a Canadian. He runs a website called Presidential UFO, which is about, he files in freedom of information requests to, to mm. get information about what presidents have known and about mm. UFOs or speak or spoken mm. about, for example. And uh, although the guy's a Canadian, mm. but he, in this, when, when he's at the conference, so he's going to be speaking about a different subject, actually. He's going to be speaking about consciousness and mathematics and is that the missing links? Right. And to f basically, go going back, for, he, he maintains that there's been a UFO cover up for going back to, you know, like I, say, I guess, late 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's basically looking at evidence how not only was the idea of UFOs affecting a UFO experience. It's more a case of that the humanity's consciousness has been, drew, been pushed in a certain direction by right. the UFO experience on the whole. Right. And what Grant Cameron's research is pointing to is that these, you know, the, uh, the people in, uh, in charge of the cover-up have known from the beginning that the consciousness aspect was, was, a, was, a, was you know, one, of the, one of the issues. Yeah. And that might be the primary, one of the primary reasons for the cover-up over the decades. Right. All right. Now, you, you hear a lot of people talking about consciousness, and it's one of those things that I've avoided really because it's not a nuts and bolts issue that, mm. that I would tend to deal with. Uh, I don't really know what it is. I, I, I guess there's a non-physical or possibly there's a non-physical element to existence that we're not just biological machines, mm. that there's something else which is the essence of us uh, and that we have a consciousness, we have an mm. awareness and that that is um, very important in determining your future if you like. You can change the physical reality by what's in your consciousness. I'm, you know, I think that's quite a plausible argument. But you get into the whole realm of metaphysics, and and it's none of it's provable. That's the problem with it all. Um, but I'm sure there's a non-physical element to mm. the to the world and and to, to to human beings especially that we're not just a biological machine. Yeah. Well, but, I can we need, but I would if, if I was the Prime Minister or whatever, what I would do is I would have universities funded departments looking at that specific issue. Is there looking at non-physical research? Because if you go to university, they'll say, well, if it's not physical, then it isn't real. Yeah. Well, I'd argue that's actually happened, but just covertly. But you think that's happened, but covertly? Mm. All right. So, I mean, I mean just so, I mean, can you, it's a kind of, well, if there is such as... Rupert Sheldrake would be a good example of someone who researches that, but he's... Yeah. He's um, well, look at look at like the uh, the premise of remote viewing, and even what Dan Sherman talks about of intuitive communication. Right, intuitive communication has never come out. It's, it's never come out publicly that that's actually happened. It's never uh -huh. been admitted to. Yeah. Whereas remote viewing has been admitted to, and that is just yeah. to people. Uh, these are other aspects of the same phenomenon. Yeah. Remote viewing, out of body experiences, mm. uh, near death experiences, and they're all possibly part and parcel of the same thing. Yeah, this um, consciousness that the body is not just you. You are not your body. You are not just your body. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. There's more to you than, mm. as I say, a, a biological computer, and you. So you think that 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 the arrival of ETs, let's say in the 1940s, they were able to connect with that non-physical well, element of people. There is a, and, and the government didn't want anyone to know about this. Perhaps. Well, it could well be for legitimate reasons. But if that's true, it could well be for legitimate reasons. If I mean, all you need to do is look up, a, I don't know, pick up a copy of a, a, any random book that's like you know a New Age book on UFOs, for example. Uh -huh. We're full of all sorts of stuff you can't verify. Or, 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 you know, one, of, one of the things, one of the reasons you stick to nuts and bolts stuff, and like with when I put events on, I, put, I choose people who I can use, uh, mostly verify. You can't. You can, some, yeah. Sometimes you can't always do that. It's not. You don't always have the luxury of being able to. Ver verify every single detail. You have yeah. to just take that as okay. This is testimony, and that level it stands. If it, it would stand in court, because people's testimony stands up in court, for example. But when it comes to like these uh, metaphysical, the metaphysical, metaphysical side of things, well, there's, a, there's, it's been in UFO kind of 
law for so for, for well, but, but since the 50s, basically, since yeah. even contactee cases, for yeah. example, that this non-physical consciousness or awakening something uh, is, being, is being going on. Now, I can't pin that down to a definition or even whether it's real or not, but hi hypothetically, if there, there are, well, we know that people are out there exper claiming experiences and writing about it and changing the course of the so you know, social direction, basically, mm -hmm. because it's out there in the public domain. Well, if that was being driven, and, the, and uh, if, that w if, that, if this happens to be true, and the military w w is all about, or the, the governments, for example, which are all about govern the mind, gov c control, mm -hmm. basically, that's the last thing they want. So re regardless of whether it was true or false in the first place, if that's what the government or the military all the people behind the cover which suspected was the case, it gives them, it, it, you know, it's understandable that why they would actually get into concern to looking yeah. at that and s speculating that, that that might be something they need yeah. to clamp down on because we don't want people too free thinking because it, we lose our control. Yeah, and so it, from that perspective, it doesn't actually matter whether it's true or false. For to, right. to be, I mean, Grant Cameron's research, for example, is evidentially based. It's all about you know, what, which, which politicians, which, which uh, academics said what, said when, you know, and collating the information and finding out what patterns were formed in that mm. to get an idea of where, what direction they went in, in their thinking. Yeah, because people like David Icke and others will say that there is more to the human being than a biological computer, and, but they don't want people to know this because it empowers people that they have knowledge of their non-physical side, mm. and, th and it's that that's the real person. And he will claim that they're using a whole range of measures so people don't find that out so that they can be controlled like a biological computer. They mm -hmm. do not want this free thinking, as you said, uh, people uh, critically analysing or becoming aware that they're more than, than they mm -hmm. think they are. Yeah. Um, there is there's a, a, another side to this, and if you think about the, uh, the, res the researcher Jacques, Jacques Vallée, uh -huh. he, wrote, he wrote Passage to Magone, right, yeah. and uh, I forget the title of the books, yeah. but he, he was, in fact, if you remember, I watched this the other day on TV, that was the close, Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind film. Mm -hmm. The French guy in that is basically modelled on Jacques, uh, Jacques Vallée, and uh, in a, an interview I watched actually on YouTube, Jacques Vallée wasn't happy with Spielberg for portraying, portraying a character modelled on him who believes that it's all ETs and they're all you know, happy and you know, friendly and this kind of stuff, because Jacques Vallée just didn't buy it at all. He he, I think he... The term he used like was the messengers of deception, I think, mm -hmm. for, because basically the fundamental point was that through this, these abduction experiences that he was researching, he saw that there's, got, there's, there's something behind it, mm -hmm. we just don't, can't know what it is, mm -hmm. and it's a bit naive just to accept it on face value that it's mm -hmm. all good. So he was conversed, I mean I'm not saying I'm taking either side of that, I actually, mm -hmm. I just say, I, I don't know, well, the, the, just don't throw the, that one in there. If so. I just go back to what we were saying about Nick Pope in the Daily Mail, and, and that, that, that aliens might be, have these advanced weapons and they're going to possibly open fire and all of this. Really, th this whole thing makes a mockery of that because if you think about what uh, any war is or any conflict, it's one group trying to manipulate and get another group to behave in a way that they would like. Yeah. So it's, so it's we were talking about the information war that's taking place mm -hmm. with news and the control of media. There's a war being fought out on yeah. that level and it's not firing physical objects at people uh, with kinetic energy. It's a lot more subtle than that. Yeah. It's about mind control, it's about influencing people. That's really the war that's at stake and it's not necessarily the army. Uh, th there are yeah, a whole lot more, uh, I would say, methods of controlling another group than mm. just firing weapons at them. And I think to suggest that extraterrestrials, if they came here, would be engaged in that kind of conflict is, is Simplistic. Yeah, I think you're right in that. If we if we start looking at this from that perspective as like what is the war that's being fought, then it, the first thing that happens in a regular conventional war, whether it's against you know Afghanistan, Iraq, or what, the first thing they'll do is send out flyers. It's an information war. They'll try and get people on side to yeah. their way of thinking. It's an, you know it's propaganda. Full spectrum dominance. Yeah, they including use, the airwaves. They, 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 they use these sheets of paper. Yeah, that's a, you know it's, the written word is more dangerous, more harmful, you know, yeah. harmful than the yeah. sword. But like basically. They'll use information as a way to get to fight a warfare, yeah. and is that what we're seeing now? Is this, yeah. is this what this disinformation? Yeah, the, the, the actual, it, art, the actual is, article is, is in the Daily Mail. It's yeah. you, you, you just don't know what to 
believe so. the motivation behind it is. Mm. It's difficult. Well, it's, it's like you pointed out with the difference between that and the in Cranes coverage in the Sun newspaper, which made him have uh -huh. to be a, a kook, but then you've got Nick Pope talking about it. Far more MOD, therefore he must be legitimate, therefore I'd treat <laughs> with serious. It's, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we've anyway, then it goes into day two of the conference. Um, yeah. Uh, and we've got um, Gary Heseltine. Yeah, we start off with Gary Heseltine, who's going to be giving us an update of. Um, well, we know what he's been up to recently. With uh, he's been doing some good work actually recently because we saw, we probably you probably saw him on this morning's yeah TV he was program. on uh, the, this morning with Philip yeah, Scorpion and, <laughs> and yeah, Chris, Chris French, French was the uh, yeah that was an interesting one. But yeah yeah on day, on day two on the second day was August Sunday August the fifth we have uh, David Griffin's back, and he'll be talking about the extraterrestrial dimension to the nineteen eighties Falklands conflict. Mm. Now. Yes, so we, uh, I, I don't know the full details of this, but the, you, you mentioned earlier, actually, we were discussing off camera. Yeah, well, well, when you said that, the extraterrestrial dimension to the Falklands conflict, what I think of is, in one of Timothy Good's books, yeah. he alleged to have intelligence telling him that there was an underground ET base underneath the South Pole. Mm -hmm. So that would make the Falklands as possibly a strategic area if there is a secret base under the South Pole, which would mean that might tell you why Britain might want to keep hold of that island. Yeah, I mean, that's from what, from what uh, David's told me. That I think, I don't, remember, I don't recall whether it was under Antarctica or whether it was actually just in the ocean. But right. That's what but there are alleged yeah. to be bases under the ocean in various locations. Yeah, so that's, that's what David's okay. going to be looking at that. So, so next at the conference is Natasha Akimovich. It's the title of the talk is ET Hybrid Consciousness. And just to clarify what, what she means by hybrid, it's the idea that... People who, there's, there's a testimony of people who claim to be abductees uh, that um, they have, when they're, they're ex have their experience, when they've been, sh ETs have shown them children, mm -hmm. you know, which, and been told that that's, that's, the, that's your child. Yeah. And so the, the, cl the claim is that the, these are hybrid, hybrid babies, mm -hmm. part them, part ET. Yeah. And, but Natasha's and, 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 and this is not uncommon, folks. Yeah, this is a lot of women who've been abducted or alleged to have been abducted, report this very same thing, being shown babies and being told that this is your baby. That the, and, and some female abductees have been in communication with one. She's had 19 miscarriages, right? And all in her sleep. And this has been so at, at a particular age of the fetus is a certain mm -hmm. age. And she's had all these ET or UFO sighting experiences. But what Natasha is going to be looking at, excuse me, is the consciousness implications of that phenomena right. implied by the evidence. So the next speaker is Alan Foster, who's spoken before. Well, from a witness testimony based stuff from uh, what people have experienced is going to project in towards what might actually be happening at the current times. This all goes in the, the, the kind of idea that we are going through um, planetary changes and it's not just the planet that's changing because we're all part of the same right think of it as a whole then if, if right. planetary is going through certain changes all we right. all do okay Anthony well um, what's the website where people can find out details of both these conferences then? you can go to exopoliticsgb.com mm -hmm. and if you can't spell exopolitics go to thisisdisclosure.com it'll take you straight there right. and the tickets are £35 per day for the June event or £70 for the weekend off £40 per day for August right. events. That's all we've got time for this week. And remember, believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. I'm Richard D. Hall. Good night.